May I now invite Padma Bhushan, Dr. B.K. Rao, a clinician, teacher, researcher, and administrator with national and international recognition in critical care. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a chairman, Knowledge Millennium Committee, and ex-chairman of Sir Gangaram Hospitals. Good morning. Sri Pranab Mukherjee, Honorable President of India, Professor Samir Brahmachari, Secretary DSIR and Director General CSIR, Professor Aaron Chikanover, recipient of Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2004, Sri Arendhut, President SHM, Mr. Sunil Kanoria, Vice President SHM, Mr. D.S. Rawat, Secretary General SHM, Distinguished Panel of Speakers, Ladies and Gentlemen. SHM has been organizing Knowledge Millennium Summits for past several years to spearhead the knowledge movement in India by promoting knowledge-based industries. This year, SHM has conceptualized the 10th Knowledge Millennium Summit with the chosen theme of curing the incurable sharing of innovations. Modern medicine has done much to eradicate and cure disease, but it has yet to achieve success in certain areas and certain diseases. These yet poorly understood diseases are clubbed as incurable. But the astronomical pace with which the scientific advancement is taking place, the very notion of incur incurability of a disease is getting challenged. It is only a matter of time before science demystifies the so-called incurable and chronic diseases and throws up a cure for some or all of them. Like modern medicine, scientific advances and innovations are also taking shape in other streams of healthcare, namely homeopathy, Ayurveda, naturopathy, and various other forms of complementary and alternative medicines. India is one of many countries facing severe shortage of trained manpower medical professionals including nurses, dentists, administrators, but especially doctors. By the most recent data, the United States has 2.67 doctors and 3.1 hospital bed per thousand people. India, on the contrary, has 0.6 doctors and 0.9 hospital beds per thousand beds per thousand people. Going by these numbers, India would need almost 2.4 million new doctors and over 2 million more hospital beds to ma match the current scale of healthcare infrastructure in the United States. With the rise of the middle class in India, incomes are rising and lifestyles are undergoing irreversible changes, particularly in urban areas. The impact of these lifestyle changes are being felt in the form of shift in India's disease burden from acute towards chronic. However, shifts in the income and consumption patterns of individuals and households have created a large base of retail consumer class backed by significant discretionary spending and awareness of the benefits of wellness as well as preventive measures. The prevalence of this key demand, this key demand driver has prom prompted many organized players to enter the wellness space and introduce wellness space offerings. Some players have integrated Indian traditional forms of medicine to make it more attractive to the consumers. The wellness space includes offerings such as Ayurveda treatment, alternative medicine, medispas, cosmetology and cosmetic dentistry clinics and dietary counseling. To conclude, I believe that Indian healthcare is on the brink of a revolution which is just waiting to happen. Opportunity, entrepreneurship and facilitative environment would witness novel healthcare delivery models evolving in the near future. This could give the much desired push to transform India's healthcare scenario. Thank you very much.
Our next speaker is someone who has been delivering affordable healthcare for all. He has led the successful execution of India's first crowdsourcing initiative, that is the open source drug discovery, to solve the complex problems associated with discovering novel therapies like neglected diseases like tuberculosis, malaria, etc. Would like to invite Professor Sameer Brahmachari, respected secretary of DSIR and the director general of CSIR to kindly express his views on this occasion. Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee ji, Nobel laureate Professor Arun Chikanmover, Sri Arun Dut, President Associate Sri Rana Kapoor ji, Sri Vice President Associate Sri B.K. Rao, Chairman, Knowledge Millennium Committee, Sri B.A. Sawath Ji. Honorable President Sir, it's my great privilege as a leader of the Indian Post-Independent Innovation System, Council for Scientific Industrial Research, CSIR, and as a Chief Mentor of the Open Source Drug Discovery Initiative to make this brief presentation and I am specially honored because I believe that India can lead in this. And the first time, one initiative of India, which world has recognized and where India is considered to be a leader. A new innovative way of doing innovation. So innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity and CSIR changed with changing opportunities and recent years created opportunities to change. And taking this advantage, we are now poised to lead in this Indian decade of innovation, benchmarking ourselves internationally. So Indian SNT has reinvented the ethics of imagination and innovation as a powerful tool for social collective transformation. In this regard, we realized the healthcare is going to be the most serious problem of the tomorrow. A billion plus people, we need a healthcare for all. The, the challenge here is not only to provide cures for the incurable diseases that has taken us, whether it is diabetes, whether it is cancer, or it is infectious disease like tuberculosis and malaria but also provide it at a price that can be affordable by the poorest of the poor. So it's not only a question of industry making it available, in, affordable, and it should be accessible. So we need partnership between science, industry, and government to make all these three happen. We realize, sir, that although CSIR has led the generic innovation of India, building a whole generic drug industry, by which, in spite of a poor nation, we have increased our life expectancy from 32 to 64, and the Lupines, the Zanbaxis, the Piramals, the Reddies, the, all these Indian pharma companies, along with the national laboratories, have provided affordable, low-cost generic drugs. Today, we are a world leader. We realize that to do clinical trial, we need regulatory processes be in position because the first phase one clinical trial industry knows that how difficult in India to initiate. Sir, so for this, we came up with a very novel idea. We decided to start a YouTube campaign, Need for New TB Drug, few months back. And within one month, we had 180 entries of young people into YouTube on five minutes movie and last, uh, Science Congress on 6th, we had our uh, Amal Palekarji uh, screened and selected the best YouTube program. It is amazing, the voice of the patients, how beautifully our young generation in the new Facebook era has put forward. And therefore, I believe that we have a hope. And this portal has about 5,000 young people below the age of 25, 30, working in this portal. So therefore, India has a legitimate right, and I believe we should be able to take this initiative forward. We need industry support, we need philanthropic support to encourage these young people to participate and make a difference. 
I am sure, sir, this <laughs> new model that we have established will open up a complete new way of looking at pharma industry. We will reshape the world's pharma industry and that should be our motto. I believe that India can actually lead. OSDD's collaborative platform is just a beginning. I won't take more time to just to say, sir, I would like to share with you, sir, even after this 65 years of independence, people are dying, so many people die in tuberculosis. So I have a new dream, I have a dream, that while 15 years back, I believe that India should have a footing on genomics, just like in technology of space and atomic energy, and that technology today we have, we are able to do, and this parliament, President said, you, during your term, we have seen that we could do almost simple human genome sequencing. The future will be very different. We will live in a predictive medicine era. The knowledge will be very different, and we are going to have a very different way how the food and nutrition will complement the lifestyle diseases. We are not going to cure everything to chemical entities, and biotherapeutics will be the future. So I have a dream. There is 14 years that the tuberculosis genome that we have sequenced, but we haven't been able to conquer this organism, and by sunset of tomorrow, as I said, 1,000 people in India will die. Therefore, I have a dream that using this open source drug discovery platform to develop affordable new therapeutics, and I want this to be the platform by which not only TB, malaria, and eventually tomorrow cancer drugs that can be made available accessible and affordable and to possible preventive and predictive medicine initiated to bring down this mortality from 1,000 to 100 by 2022 when we will celebrate our 75th Indian Independence Day. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share this dream.